I hope entries enjoy the Woman Up Summit as much as I am because these uh, stories are so inspiring and uh, it's a pleasure to actually listen to everyone speak. So when uh, the CIE team uh, contacted me and uh, told me that my session would be called Shoot It Down, I just smiled to myself because that's all that I've been doing for the last 16 years. I've been shooting down clay targets, I've been shooting down perceptions, I've been shooting down norms, I've been shooting down glass ceilings. And if I would have known what a roller coaster ride it would have been, then I would have probably taken my mom's advice, got myself a job and settled down. But clearly that didn't happen, here I am. So, uh, so now. So do you know what uh, clay pigeon shooting is? Does anybody know what clay pigeon shooting is? No? No. So you must have seen uh, Gaga Narang Abhinav Bindra shooting at paper targets where they sh uh, take an air rifle and they try and get a perfect 10. Clay pigeon shooting is very different. Uh, we shoot with uh, hunting guns. So it's the closest that came to hunting and because hunting got banned, so they introduced clay pigeon shooting. Um, they're basically clay discs which are bright orange, beautiful in colour which you have to shoot down, break down their hunting guns. And why is it called clay pigeon shooting? Because back in the day when hunting was allowed, then they used to have pigeons in traps and the shooter used to call out and uh, the trap used to be released. The pigeon had to fly out to a certain distance and you had to shoot them down. Bloody and gory, I'm glad I wasn't in that era. And uh, so yeah. So now how it all started for me was back in 1986. I used to uh, accompany my dad to the Thunderbolt Ranges in Bikaner where he used to be shooting skeet and I used to take my little toy gun that makes a grr grr sound and stand behind him and mimic him shoot. So okay, it would be a little presumptuous of me to know that at the age of 3 I know what my career graph would look like. So no, it, I didn't know that I was going to be shooting then, it was just an introduction. Moving on, we moved to Jaipur and I went to school to a very own MGD and uh, I was always inclined towards sport, much to the delight of my dad and dismay of my mom because all she wanted me to do was, uh, I mean she wanted me to pursue sport but basically as a, as a hobby and uh, but still be good at it and at the same time she always wanted a prefix before my name she wanted me to be a doctor Shagun Chaudhary or an engineer Shagun Chaudhary or a CEO Shagun Chaudhary and all of that and uh, anyway I'm, she's sitting right here so I have to be very careful about what I say so, <laughs> so she thought that there was going to be basically okay I understood her I understand her concerns now because uh, women in sport I mean what's the future where there is no financial support, there is no, uh, you don't make any money, you don't, back in the day, and there was no recognition, there was nobody actually uh, encouraged you to take up sport. I mean, okay, badminton and squash, women still play. Now imagine if people talk to me about shooting, I, I can't imagine what Mary Com's plight would be, because she's, she's a boxer, right? So we're like, oh, you box, really? What are you thinking? Similarly, the uh, Bogut sisters from Haryana who are wrestlers, I mean, it, it really takes a lot to go into uncharted territory. However, I did because my dad and I both were relentless and uh, my mom was helpless. So, that happened. So, now, fast forward, I, uh, during, while, in my years in, while I was in school in NGD, there was no range over here. So I could not really pursue clay pigeon shooting, even though I remember I, I liked it, I could, would have forgotten about it as well. But then I went to uh, Delhi for college and uh, made my mom happy because I went to Delhi for college and pursuing economics honours, made my dad even happier because there was a range in Delhi where I could go and shoot. So however, so when I uh, got into college, so dad, uh, dad's like, baby, you know, you, you, in, I remember you enjoyed it, so would you like to come, would you like to give it a shot again? So I'm like, yeah, sure. And that's all that I did. That's all. I just used to go to the range every single day and I used to shoot. Now, and let me explain one thing to you. Clay pigeon shooting back in the day was a completely male-dominated sport. I was the only lone ranger over there, super enthusiastic because I loved it but not realizing that it's not going to be as easy as I thought it was. Every thought that I'm going to be there for a couple of months, which turned into years, get bored and give it up and that will be the end of it. 
that wasn't to be because my mom had always told me maybe whatever you take up you have to be the best at it nothing less than that so yeah those words still echo and um, there i was in 2002 uh, training and just you know there were no coaches there was no support staff there were no women shooting so you had to basically take tips from your fellow shooters on how to shoot and how to you know basically it, it was all hit and dry in 2003 india was hosting the asian clay pigeon shooting championship and i was a part of the team no no let's not get ahead of ourselves i didn't become so great in one year it was basically that india was hosting it and so there would have been no uh, cost involved or incurred by the government as far as i would take part in the competition i took part and uh, much to my amusement and uh, uh, and everybody else's i actually beat the chinese to win a bronze in double trap and i was super excited i'm like okay this is a start this is getting a one international medal definitely there's something in it and i will like to pursue this further in 2003 we had the world championships in cyprus and uh, like i said there was no coach there was uh, i was the only girl so there wasn't too much belief or faith in my ability uh, forget about uh, the olympics nobody had even like taken part in uh, major international competitions but because of my achievement at the asian level my name was selected as a part of the world championship team in 2003 which was to be which was to participate in cyprus now has everyone seen chakde yes yeah so you can imagine the excitement the girls felt when they knew that they were going for the world championships so that was my excitement but i was the only girl over there so i was inside on my own while the men were together in, in groups i was there by myself and um, like i said there was uh, you know there was no backing at that point in time so i still remember before boarding the flight to cyprus i picked up the newspaper to read because uh, uh, the team had been announced and they every day takes uh, you know uh, mbs thoughts on how the team would do and everything my national foreign coach at that point in time was so happy with me that he gave a uh, statement to the press saying uh, when they asked about me saying you know the only girl who said he said oh shagun chaudhary will come last in the world championships and this i read before boarding the flight obviously dejected and you know it was it was upsetting because before i did i hadn't even performed and people had written out my result and as an uh, an obedient and honorable student i kept his word and i came last and uh, that's about it and i was like you know the words ended and this and that my dad i just still remember was with me for the world championships and he says baby it doesn't matter we move on as we move on from what he said i'll come last i came last and now so low over anyway 2004 the athens olympics happened then uh, i was first in double trap all this while suddenly the international shooting federation takes a decision that let's finish double trap for women from the olympics just like that so all these four years that i had put in into double trap all came to us i mean it meant nothing i had spent four years where i was you know i i, I was doing college but at the same time pursuing sport but none of the women were pursuing sport going against my mom's wishes where i basically confirmed her fears saying you know there is going to be no future chao you have ruined her life and so on and so forth but uh, and now it was a decision for me to take the either to give it up or to switch gears so should i shift to another event which is trap which is also clay pigeon or should i just give it up i obviously shifted to trap and in two th- and but you have to understand all these years that i was shooting and as the years progressed my friends were getting jobs and making money or were getting married and settling down and making babies while i was there just you know start i was basically where i started i started shooting trap and i had to start the same process all over again with a different technique different everything was different and uh, so it it a lot of doubts also started creeping creeping in my mind wondering whether what i'm doing is the right thing and uh, going to social get togethers did not help so with my parents because i would meet uncles and aunties and they would be like and well uh, so they would come up to me and they would be like uh, so beta what do you do and i would have my collars up and say that you know i'm a part of the indian shooting team and i'd feel very proud of it and they'd be like uh, oh that's very nice but what else do you do 
and I would not know what to say because that is what I did. And however, all that I went on with it. In 2008, I won my first international medal in trap. So it took another three years to do that. I applied to ONGC, the World Natural Gas Corporation Limited, and I was picked up by them. And I started, then everything changed. Everything changed. I had the backing, I had the support, I was financially independent. So now I could completely focus on my sport. And that's when I would go, go abroad and I would train and I would stay by myself. I still remember I used to go and, uh, you know, uh, none of the, like, okay, there were more girls who came in by that time, point of time. But we had to walk to wherever we want, had to go to. So if there was a grocery store, like where, where I trained, is basically in Italy. And it's a very small place. So the grocery store is a good 3-4 kilometers away. So either you rent a bike from the place that you're staying, or you basically walk and come back laden with, you know, food and groceries and all that. You have to walk all the way back. While all the men would basically drive their cars, and we basically had to hitchhike and say, could you please take us to the grocery store today? Or could you please take us here? Could you completely depend on them. I finally said, I said, forget this, this is not happening because this is going to be a long haul. So I started driving on the wrong side in Italy. No, I didn't bash any cars, not yet, but I started doing that. So I became independent. Became independent, I used to go and travel for competitions by myself, uh, compete, come back. My only uh, thing in life was to achieve something that would give me the recognition that I had or the sense of achievement that I had been working for and that was nothing less than the Olympics. So 2012 London Olympics were about two years down the line and uh, it finally happened in 2011 on the 8th of September, the, the World Championships in Belgrade and uh, there was one quota place to be won. When I say quota places, now I hope nobody's getting bored, right? No. All right. Okay. So uh, when you say quota places, so it's not uh, it's not that India would send a team for the Olympics. You literally have to win a place in the world to be eligible to play in the Olympics. So, and there are only about 25, 23 or 25 countries that, that managed to get that eligibility card to play in the Olympics. So, and the World Cups and uh, the World Championship in Belgrade in 2011 was the last stop to actually get that. So here I was against the Australian, it was between me and the Australian to get the quota place. And I was so engrossed in shooting my final round that I had no idea what the result was. And I finished the round, there was clapping. I didn't realize whether they were clapping for the Australians or clapping for me. So I looked back and uh, I just kept looking out. As you can see, my dad is a constant factor in this. So I kept looking out for my father. And uh, he came and he hugged me. And he says, baby, we're going to London. And at that point, it was, it was just a sense of relief, a sense of that all these 10 years or whatever, it actually meant something, it all came together. I remember calling up my mom from there, she was here in Jaipur, and uh, I said, uh, hi mom, uh, I'm sorry I could not give you a doctor, an engineer or whatever, but would an Olympian behind my name do? And uh, she, she choked up and she was like, And uh, so yeah, that's what, I mean, and once, I, once that happened, I saw that there was a sea change. It was, I had finally arrived. I finally belonged. I became the first ever girl to represent India at the Olympics in clay pigeon shooting. And now that I've seen, there is a shift. There's a shift. We used to be five or six girls eventually who used to compete. And now at the national championships, we are over a hundred. We get government funding, we get uh, coaches, we get senior coaches, junior coaches, we are sent for international competitions. We are, I mean, there is no looking back. Finally, sports has arrived, sports women have arrived, we are getting the due recognition that we deserve and it's finally happened. And I just feel that as women, we have to work twice as hard to prove ourselves uh, when it comes to unchartered territory. Do you agree or you don't? <laughs> right? And But once you've achieved that, it's like the floodgates open for everyone else. And this is what the Women Up Summit is trying to bring to you. Stories and experiences that make you believe that there is light at the end of the tunnel. But it's for you to walk that length unabatedly. Thank you so much for having me.
taking questions. Uh, so, Shagun, any questions that we have over here? For Shagun, any questions, experiences? Shagun, your yatra was very long in this way. मैं आपसे एक प्रश्न पूछना चाहूँगी क्या आप गवर्नमेंट को लिखना पसंद करेंगी कि स्कूल टाइम से गर्ल्स को फैसिलिटीज दी जाए और जो स्कूल के प्रेग्राउंड हैं उनको डेवलप किया जाए और सारी फैसिलिटीज दी जाएं गर्ल्स को कि वो समय से आगे आए और इंडिया को रिप्रेजेंट करें जी मैं गवर्नमेंट को तो लिखन जो अपनी बेटी को इनकरेज करे और प्रमोट करे स्पोर्ट्स लेने के लिए, because before the schools and everything, it all starts at home. If you don't have the backing of your parents, if I didn't have the backing of my parents, I wouldn't be standing here before you and talking about this. So it all starts from there. And the government, I mean, school, I, I went to school. We have playgrounds, we have everything, but nobody takes it up after a certain point. So it's basically it all starts at home. Shagun, your mom was not in favor, right? Initially. Initially. Now she now she preaches it to him. Now, now. When this turnaround came about? This turnaround came about when I qualified for the Olympics. Okay. This turnaround, yes. And before that, when you started and she saw that you are into this and you are not going to leave, she must have tried some subtle conspiracies to get you off track. So many. So many. Can you share some of them? So I still remember when I got through college and everything. So it was my mom has this very subtle way of kind of convincing me to do what she wants to do, wants me to do, but making me believe that it's all my, it's my decision completely. So I still remember when I joined college and I wanted to take up English honors or something, you know. And my dad said, you know, if you're going to take up shooting, take a lighter course. But she said, no, baby, if you take economics honors and then you shoot at the same time. Then you can become a road scholar. So and that is not something that too many people have achieved. So think about that. Think about the bigger picture. And I was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is what I'm going to do. So I took up economics honors, and obviously it's a very heavy course, and I could not manage both. So she has done these things like not once. Even now she does it. If she if she she likes something, she'll give me subtle. Maybe this would look better on you. You should try this out and everything. And I'm like, okay, I'm an obedient child. Very obedient. Trust me. So so yeah. So I go with it. Okay. Yeah. Please name for the international awards, international awards you have got. So I, so I'm the first and only Olympian in the country. I've also won the Rajasthan award, and I am the Asian Games medalist, the only Asian Games team medalist to have won in the 2014. I am the current national champion in trap, I am the current national games champion in double trap and I have been selected to participate in the selection trials for the upcoming Commonwealth Games and Asian Games, World Cups and World Championships for 2018. So yeah, to mention. Um, Shagun, hi. Uh, my question to you is, uh, what next? What are they and what do you all do you want to achieve in the next 5 years, 10 years? So. Uh, so participation in the Olympics was a big thing for me and it was rather overwhelming but now having been through that experience I am training for Tokyo 2020 and would be aiming for a medal over there. So please wish me luck. See we always ask people to that if you could give advice to your 17 year old self or something. So I want to ask you if you could shoot down three inhibitions that you had at a younger age, what would that be? At a younger age, when you just started off, when I started off, it was inhibitions. Was I, I guess, fear to a large extent of the unknown, because I didn't know what I was. I wasn't that confident about myself then, because I wasn't. See, nobody had ever done this before, right? So it's easier to kind of follow somebody's path, knowing that it's been achieved. But going into the unknown was something. So I wish I didn't have that. And maybe you know, and I would have taken the right decisions earlier. I had switched to a different event and not wasted four years. I wish uh, shot down. You know, I think I pretty much shot down everything. I can't really think of anything. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, one piece of advice for 
coaches in India, like how your coach, uh -huh. he probably brought you down because of At that, that point of time, yes. yes so, one advice to coaches. So, coaches have definitely got much better over time. They have also got educated and there are proper coaching uh, uh, courses in place that educate what a coach should say to his student and what not is meant to be said. So, I think more of those institutions are coming up and we just need more of those because there's immense talent in India as far as, you know, overall sports or whatever, but we just need the right eye to pick up uh, pick up that talent and nurture it with the right, in the right direction. So, yeah, so I think coaching institutes for coaches would also be a great idea. Will you become a coach in future? maybe, maybe, but I have a long future ahead of me, so I'm not looking at that right now. <laughs> We'll have one last question. Uh, Shagun, just to tell you that we are all very proud of you. Thank you, you so much, us, Zira. You made us uh, proud and uh, we wish you all the very Thank best. You. But my compliments to your parents sitting here because <laughs> they were totally with you and you yes. told us all the so, uh, Your father was with you, going everywhere and True. giving you all the motivation and all. True. And I wish we had these kind of parents, many more parents like this. And any message for the parents which you did say that it has to be first the parents, then the government, yes. that they have to motivate the, the child and uh, uh, see that they, 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 for go, me, places, I, yes. they go places. So. For me, I was fortunate that I was never uh, brought up in an environment where there was any difference between a boy and a girl. I was, uh, uh, I was taught how to change a car tire first before I learned how to drive. So, pretty much. So, I, I, what I feel is for parents, it's very important for them to believe in their children. And now, it's not earlier, it, there used to be basically three mainstream occupations that or professions that kids could take up. Now, every little thing that we've seen, we've spoken to women here also, there's anything and anything that you can make a profession of, including sports. So, as long as you believe in your child and you believe in your child's uh, capability, ability, and encourage that, your child is bound to be a success. I mean, there's is bound to happen. Well, you have inspired so many uh, girls, so thank you. Sir. Wish you all the very best, and thank many you. more honors, and many more uh, prizes, and, and my compliments to the parents, <laughs> your proud parents. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Shagun, for the inspirational talk.